Hi! For this video, we'll be discussing an overview of parasitology, specifically the different types of parasites. This report was a group effort which was gathered, pieced together, and edited to be presented to you today by second-year medical students from the College of Medicine in Cagayan State University for a class in parasitology. In this report, we'll be tackling a general overview of what parasites are, their classifications, and then going on to the more specific but not too specific, components of each classification. These will include the parasitic protozoa, which include kinetoplasta, flagellated protozoa, amoeba, and other related protozoa, trematodes, which include the flukes, cestodes, which include tapeworms, nematodes, which include roundworms and pinworms, and other parasitic organisms like the hairworm, the thorny-headed worm, and the arthropods. So, what is a parasite? A parasite is an organism that lives on or in a host organism and gets its food from or at the expense of its host. A parasite can be classified into three main classes, namely protozoa, helminths, and ectoparasites. Besides this classification, a parasite can also be described based on where they are located on the host. For example, a parasite that lives on the skin would be called an ectoparasite, while endoparasites are those that live inside the body of the host. Parasites are single-celled organisms and are considered the simplest forms of animals. They are generally classified according to their organelles of locomotion, which are the cilia, flagella, and pseudopodia. Other organelles they contain, besides the locomotory organelle, include the nucleus, the nucleolus, and the mitochondria. If you recall from your biology classes, parasites are classified under the kingdom Protista. Under this, there are several phyla which are outlined in the slide here. These include phylum sarcomastigophora, phylum ciliophoran, phylum apicomplexa, and phylum microspora. First, phylum sarcomastigophora branch out into subphyla, which are differentiated according to, as was mentioned in the slide earlier, their locomotory organelle. Those under this phylum, which have flagella, a web-like organelle, are under the subphylum mastigophora, while those that have pseudopodia, a hyaline foot-like organelle, are classified under the subphylum sarcodina. We will find that these organisms are named fairly simply, and their classifications are derived from their characteristics. For example, phylum ciliophora, from its name, includes organisms with cilia, hair-like locomotory organelles. Phylum apicomplexa is made up of organisms with an apical complex at the interior end and contain an apicoplast, and phylum microspora, which are spore-forming parasites. Now, Let's see the difference between protozoa, helminths, and arthropods. Protozoa are microscopic, one-celled organisms that can be free-living or parasitic in nature. Helminths are large, multicellular organisms that are generally visible to the naked eye in their adult stages. Arthropods are generally used more narrowly to refer to the organisms such as ticks, fleas, lice, and mites that attach to and burrow into the skin and remain there for relatively long periods of time. Now that we've defined some terms and discussed the classification of parasites, let's get into each individual classification. Let's start with parasitic protozoa. Under protozoa, we have several more classifications. Under this is a class called kinetoplasta. The name derives from its, well, its characteristic kinetoplast. The species under this class will parasitize anything from humans to plants. They have a single large mitochondrion, which contains a kinetoplast at the base of its flagellum. So what is a kinetoplast? A kinetoplast is a dense network of circular DNA inside the large mitochondrion and is shaped like disc. Under the kinetoplasta are the trypanosomatidae. Species under this family have a single elongated or round nucleus, and most of them are heteroxinous, meaning that they live within more than one host during the course of their life cycle. They are also hemoflagellates, which means that 1. Hemo, they thrive in the bloodstream, and 2. Flagellates, they contain flagella. 
This class contains two species that you might have heard come up before, Trypanosoma and Leishmania. It is worthy to mention, however, that members of the Trypanosomatidae have different forms. Illustrated in this slide are the four forms, the trypanomastigote or the trypanosome form, which has a flagellum on the margin of the undulating membrane. The flagellum ends at the kinetoplast. Remember that dense mitochondrial disc shape I told you about? You can see it here posterior to the nucleus. This morphology is similar to the epimastigote or the crithidia, except the free flagellum continues from the interior end and then backwards along the margin of the undulating membrane. Here, it ends at the kinetoplast instead, which is now interior to the nucleus. The promastigote or the leptomonas stage is elongated and spindle-shaped like the previous two, but has pointed ends and a free flagellum that arises from the kinetoplast at the interior end. Lastly, we have the amastigote or the spheroid stage. This takes on the form of an ovoid in shape and does not have a free flagellum. A medically important genus under this class is genus Trypanosoma. Species of this genus will cause American trypanosomiasis and varieties of sleeping sickness, namely the West African or Gambian and East African or Rhodesian variety. Specifically, these species include Trypanosoma cruzi, Trypanosoma brucei gambiense, and Trypanosoma brucei rhodiense. Trypanosoma cruzi causes American trypanosomiasis, also known as Chagas disease. The life cycle of this species includes the reduvid bug or the kissing bug as the vector in both humans and animals such as domestic cats and dogs, wild armadillo, raccoon, and rats, which serve as the reservoir hosts. For both Trypanosoma brucei gambiense, which causes the West African variant of the sleeping sickness, and Trypanosoma brucei rhodiense, which causes the East African variant of the sleeping sickness, only epimastigote or trypanomastigote forms are exhibited. The vector for both is the CT fly of the genus Glacina, but a different species of fly are involved for each. While humans are the reservoir for T. gambiense, T. rhodiense has reservoirs in both domestic animals, especially cattle, and wild animals like antelopes. Next on the list is the genus Leishmania, which causes leishmaniasis. The genus Leishmania is spread through sandflies. These flies are incredibly small and are smaller than a thumbnail or a mosquito, only measuring around 1.5 to 3.5 millimeters. The genus Leishmania includes four major pathogens. Leishmania donovani causes visceral leishmaniasis, also called Kala Azar. Here, phagocytose parasites are seen in small numbers in blood. Leishmania tropica causes cutaneous leishmaniasis and pretends with a skin ulcer, with elevated and indurated margins, leaving an ugly scar as it heals. Leishmania mexicana also causes cutaneous leishmaniasis. Lastly, Leishmania brasilensis causes American or mucocutaneous leishmaniasis and presents with lesions that resemble cutaneous leishmaniasis. Now that we've moved on from Gnatoplasta, we will discuss the flagellated parasitic protozoa. There are three common species of interest which fall under this, and they include Giardia intestinalis, also known as Giardia lambia and Giardia duodenalis, which causes giardiasis or traveler's diarrhea, Chylomastix mesnelli, and trichomonads. Chylomastix mesnelli is not pathogenic, but is associated, but not the cause, however, of parasitic infections. Trichomonads includes Trichomonas hominis, found in the intestines, Trichomonas tenax, found in the oral cavity, and Trichomonas vaginalis, which is found in the genitals. The third member under protozoan parasites are amoebas. These organisms are constantly changing shapes and move by ending out finger-like extensions of their cell membranes called pseudopods, or false feet projections. Amoeba will infect different parts of the host body. Six species have been established as parasites of the man and infects the mouth and intestines, and include Entamoeba histolica, Entamoeba coli, Entamoeba gingivalis, Dientamoeba fragilis, Endolimax nana, and Iodamoeba bushlia. Amoeba infecting the brains and eyes include Nyglaria fowleri and those under the genus Acanthamoeba. For intestinal and luminal protozoa, all amoebas are capable of producing cyst and trophozoite, 
except for Entamoeba gingivalis and Dientamoeba fragilis. Found in the colon except Entamoeba gingivalis, which is found in the oral cavity, and all are commensals except for Entamoeba histolica. These protozoa cause a variety of diseases, which include amoebiasis, amoebic dysentery, amoebic hepatitis, and pulmonary amoebiasis. Soil and water amoeba includes Entamoeba histolica, Acantamoeba histolica, those under the Acantamoeba genus, and Eglaria fowleri. If infected, symptoms include intermittent diarrhea, abdominal cramps, vomiting, and general body malaise. Remember that amoeba can either infect the mouth and intestines or the brain and the eyes. Two common diseases caused by deep pathogenic protozoa are amoebic dysentery if the parasite infects the mouth and intestines and meningoencephalitis if the parasite infects the brain. If the patient presents with colitis with diarrhea, which will sometimes be bloody, abdominal pain and cramping, this may have been caused by entamoeba histolytica and might be amoebic dysentery. This species of pathogenic protozoa also infect humans, its reservoir, and the human may even be asymptomatic. For meningoencephalitis, there is a destruction of the brain tissue and may cause the infected human to present with frontal headaches, a sore throat, fever, a stiff neck, blocked nose, altered taste and smell, and Koenig's sign, which is a pain or spasm that accompanies a maneuver, denoting a positive sign for meningitis. This disease is caused by either Neglaria fowleri or species of the genus Acanthamoeba. If Acanthamoeba infects the brain, it can also enter the eye and cause keratitis and corneal ulcers. So let us start by discussing the phylum Apicomplexa. This group of parasites possess a structure called the apical complex, in which this complex is a collection of anterior structures like for example the polar rings, subpellicular tubules, conoid process, rope teeth, and microlips, in which this structure allows the parasite to invade the host cells. This group of parasites are actually divided into two classes. First, we have the aconoidachida, and second, the conoidachida. And this phylum apicomplexa consists of a structure called the apicoplast, or what we term the plastid. So the first class that we are going to talk about under this phylum apicomplexa is the class Aconoidacida. So under this group, there are two common group of pathogens. First, we have the Babesidae and second, the Plasmodidae. So under the family Babesidae, um, this family causes the disease babe siosis or babesiosis, which are actually a blood infection that is caused by a tiny parasite, for example, the Babesia microti. So the Babesia microti or the Babesia parasites infects your red blood cells and they are usually transmitted by a tick bite. And it is nice to know that Babesiosis often occurs at the same time as Lyme disease. And the tick that carries the Lyme bacteria can also be infected with the Babesia parasite. So the next pathogen is the plasmodidae or the plasmodium species, which are actually the causative agents of malaria. Plasmodium is a genus of unicellular eukaryotes that are obligate parasites of vertebrates and insects. Obligate parasites meaning they cannot live without a host or survive without a host. The life cycles of plasmodium species involve development in a blood-feeding insect host which then injects parasite into a vertebrate host during a blood meal and these plasmodium species are transmitted by mosquitoes particularly the female anopheles mosquitoes as you can see here in the next slide we have the babesia and the different plasmodium species the plasmodium falciparum plasmodium vivax Plasmodium malariae, and Plasmodium ovale. So the Babesia microti is transmitted by the bite of infected exode scapularis ticks. So as you can see here, microscopically, these are the Babesia parasites or the Babesia microti. 
So next, we have the plasmodium species or the plasmodium parasites. Plasmodium falciparum is the deadliest species of plasmodium that causes malaria in humans. They are transmitted through the bite of a female Anopheles mosquitoes and causes the disease most dangerous for. So it is very important to note that Plasmodium falciparum is the most deadliest species of Plasmodium. So as you can see here, this is the Plasmodium falciparum microscopically. So as you can see here in the slide, we have the ring stages of the Plasmodium falciparum. And next, we have the Plasmodium vivax. This parasite is the most frequent and widely distributed cause of recurring malaria. Note, this is the most frequent Plasmodium species, the Plasmodium vivax. And another Plasmodium parasite is the Plasmodium malariae. Plasmodium malariae is one of several species of Plasmodium parasites that infect other organisms as pathogens. And they are recognized since the Greek and Roman civilizations over 2,000 years ago. And as you can see here in this slide, this is the Plasmodium malariae microscopically. And the next Plasmodium is the Plasmodium ovale. Plasmodium ovale is a species of parasitic protozoa that causes tertian malaria in humans. So, note that the tertian malaria is caused by Plasmodium ovale. So, in this slide, we can appreciate the different stages and the morphology of the Plasmodium species that can be viewed under the microscope. So, as you can see here, we have a ring stage, trophozoid, schizone, and the gametocyte stage. So, the ring stage of the plasmodium species and the trophozoids mature into schizone. And the schizone can be differentiated into the gametocyte or the sexual erythrocytic stage of the plasmodium or the malaria parasite. The plasmodium species are the group of parasites causing malaria and they are transmitted by the bite of an infected female mosquito belonging to the genus Anopheles. Remember that there are two hosts that the Plasmodium species require. We have the human host and the uh, mosquito host. The female Anopheles mosquito are actually the definitive host of the Plasmodium, while the humans are the intermediate host of the Plasmodium. And as you recall, definitive hosts are the organisms that support the sexual reproductive form of the parasites, while the intermediate hosts are the organism that supports the immature or the non-reproductive forms of the parasites, particularly the plasmodium species or the malarian parasites. We will now go to the class Conoida Sida. Under this class, we have four most common coccygian diseases. First, we have the cryptosporodiosis caused by the organism Cryptosporodium hominis and Cryptosporodium parvum. Second, we have the toxoplasmosis caused by the organism Toxoplasma gondii. Third, we have the iso isosporiasis caused by Isosporia belli. And lastly, we have the cyclosporiasis caused by Cyclosporia cayatinensis. These coccygian parasites infect the intestinal tracts of animals. And note that they are the largest group of apicomplexan protozoa. Coxidia are subclass of microscopic, spore-forming, single-celled obligate intracellular parasites belonging to the apicomplexan class of Conoida sida. So next, we have the ciliated protista parasites or the ciliates or the family ciliophora. As the name implies, these organisms contain cilia. So they bear cilia that are distributed in precise rows or patches. The only human parasite representative of this group is the organism Bal Balantigium coli, which is actually a largest protozoan parasite, which causes balantiditis or balantigial dysentery. So this family, ciliates or ciliophora, may be placed in their own phylum or kingdom called alveolata because they all have membrane-bound cavities 
also called alveoli, under the cell surface. They also include the paramecium and the vorticella organisms. We also have the other protozoan parasites, which are the microsporidia and the myxozoa. So as you can see here in the slide, this is the picture of microsporidia and myxozoa microscopically. So first we have here the microsporidia. Microsporidia are parasites that have polar filaments. So the polar filaments are tube-like and held coiled within the spores. In humans, these parasites increasingly recognized as the opportunistic parasites, especially among the AIDS patients. And secondly, we have the myxozoa. Myxozoa are actually not a protozoa at all, but they are now included, included in the phylum Nidaria, although their position within the phylum is still a matter of discussion. Myxozoa are parasites of both invertebrates and vertebrates, mostly the fishes. Here in the next slide, this is a picture of phylum mesozoa. So phylum mesozoa are tiny. They are tiny ciliated animals that parasitize marine invertebrates related to the flatworms. Some 50 species have been identified, all of which are exclusively marine in their lifestyle. There are two groups under this phylum. We have the Disayemida and Orthonectida. Mesozoa were once thought to be evolutionary intermediate forms between protozoans and metazoans. But now they are thought to be degenerate or simplified metazoa. So as you can see here, we have a picture of a metazoa. So we will now go to the class trematodes or the flux. So we will talk about the general characteristic of the flux or trematodes. So first, all flux appear flat and leaf-like except for the schistosomes or the blood flux which are elongated and cylindrical. Second, all flux have no body cavity and they are unsegmented. And they are hermaphroditic or what we term monoecious. Meaning, um, these organisms have both the male and female reproductive organs in the same individual. That's why they are called hermaphrodite. Except for the schistosomes, which have the separate sexes, or what we term dioecious. And third, all our eggs are operculated. Except for the schistosomes, the eggs are non-operculated. And the infective stage... To the final host is the metacercarii, except for the schistosomes, it is the cercarii. The mode of transmission of the flux or trematodes are ingestion. Except for the schistosomes, they are transmitted through skin penetration. So, there are two intermediate hosts that the flux or trematodes require. The first intermediate host is the snail. And the second intermediate hosts are the fish, crab, plant, snail, and ant. The first intermediate host, which is the snail, harbors the cercarii, and the ant, which is a second intermediate host, harbors the metacercarii. So as you can see here, the different intermediate hosts of trematodes harbor different kinds of flux. So for the heterophys, heterophys, clonorchis sinensis, and Opistorchis felineus, their intermediate host is the fish. While for the Paragonimus westermani, its intermediate host is the crab. And for the Fasciola hepatica, Fasciola gigantica, and for Fasciolopsis buski, their intermediate host is the plant. And for the Iconostoma ilocanum, their intermediate host is the snail. And lastly, for Dicroilium dendriticum and Uretrema pancreaticum, their intermediate host is the ant. Except for the schistosomes, they only have one intermediate host, which is the snail. The snail harbors the infectious form of the schistosomes, which is the cercarii. So the next characteristic of the flux or trematodes is that the adult form attach themselves to the host by means of two suckers, 
we have an oral sucker and a ventral sucker or the acetabulum. Except for the organism heterophys, heterophys, they have three suckers. An oral sucker, ventral sucker, and a genital sucker or the gonotil. So the eggs that are mature are laid by the organisms schistosoma, heterophys, opistorchis, and clonorchis. While the eggs that are immature, they are laid by the fasciola, fasciolopsis, paragonimus, and echinostoma. These organisms possess an alimentary canal without an anus. And they also possess complex reproductive structure such as the testis, ovary, and the uterus. So next is the classification of the flux. So the flux are classified according to the location preferred by the adult worm in the definitive host. So there are usually four locations that the flux um, invade. We have the blood vessels, the intestines, the liver, and the lungs. So first, we have the blood flux or the schistosomes. The schistosoma, they are known as blood flux because they invade the visceral blood vessels. They are parasitic flatworms responsible for a highly significant group of infections in humans termed schistosomiasis. So we have the Schistosoma japonicum, Schistosoma mansoni, and Schistosoma hematobium. While for the lung fluke, the only organism is the Paragonimus westermani. The Paragonimus westermani is the major species of lung fluke that infects humans, causing paragono Paragonimiasis. This species is sometimes called Japanese lung fluke or the Oriental lung fluke. Again, they are called the Japanese lung fluke or oriental lung fluke. Well, for the intestinal flux, we have the Fasciolopsis busci, Echinostoma ilocanum, Heterophyes heterophyes, Metagonimus yokogawai, Nanophyetus salminocola, and Gastrodiscoides hominis. And for the liver flux, we have the Clonorchis sinensis, Opistorchis felineus, Opistorchis vivirini, Dicrocoelium dendriticum, Fasciola hepatica, and Fasciola gigantica. All of these organisms will be um, further discussed in the succeeding topics. So as you can see here in the slide, we have a picture of Schistosomia japonico, a picture of Fasciolopsis buski, Paragonimus westermani, and Fasciola hepatica. So, the Schistosoma japonicum is one of the major infectious agents of Schistosomiasis. And the Fasciolopsis buski is a notable parasite of medical importance in humans and veterinary importance in pigs. And they are prevalent in Southern and Eastern Asia. While for the Paragonomis westermani, which is a lung fluke, it is a major species of lung flux that infects the humans. As I said earlier, they are also called Japanese lung flux or the Oriental lung flux. And while for the Fasciola hepatica, which is a liver flux, they are known as the sheep liver flux. So we move on to cestodes. Cestodes are also known as tapeworms. The general characteristics of cestodes are the following. Scolex or specialized attachment organ. Neck is the site of proliferation. Straw by law consists of segments, includes immature, mature, and gravid proglutids. There is no special digestive tract. Nutrition is mainly derived from absorption of digested materials from the small intestine of the host. Adults are attached to the intestinal wall by means of suckers or by hooks found at the posterior per portion. They are hermaphrodites or monoecious. Transmission occurs when infective larvae are accidentally ingested with food. Basically, there are two classification of cestodes, pseudophilidian and cyclophilidian. Pseudophilid cestodes are tapeworms with multiple segments and two bothria or sucking grooves as adults. 
proglutids are identifiably pseudophilid as the genital pore and uterine pore are located on the midventral surface and the ovary is bilobe. Cyclophilidae. Tapers of the order Cyclophilidae are the most important cestode parasites of humans and domesticated animals. All have multiple proglutid or segments and all have four suckers on their scolices, though some may have other structures as well. Pseudophilidian cestodes can be classified into three. First is Diphilobotrium latum or broadfish tapeworm. Second, Diphilobotrium mansoni or Spirometra mansoni. And third, Spirometra. Meanwhile, here are the classification of Cyclophilidian cestodes. Tinea solium is a pork tapeworm. Tinea saginata is a beef tapeworm. Hymenolepis nana, a dwarf tapeworm. Hymenolepis diminuta, a rat tapeworm, Dipelidium caninum, a dog tapeworm, and the Kinococcus granulosus, hydatid tapeworm. The next type of parasites are nematodes. Nematodes are also known as roundworms. Generally, they are elongated and cylindrical in shape with bilateral symmetry. They have a complete digestive tract and a muscular pharynx that is characteristically triradiate. They are provided with separate sexes, although some may be parthenogenetic. Ascaris belongs to Ascaridida, Parastrongylus, and the hookworms to Strongylida, Strongyloides to Rhabditida, and Terobius to Oxyurida and filaria worms to spirorida. They may be also classified as either intestinal nematodes or extra-intestinal. These nematodes can be grouped on the basis of the habitat of the adult worms. Most of these nematodes are found in the small and large intestines while some are found outside the intestines. Here are the classification of intestinal nematodes. Capillaria philippinensis, Enterobius vermicularis, Trichuris trichuria, Ascaris limbricoides, hookworm, and Strongyloides turcoralis. Extraintestinal nematodes, on the other hand, can be classified as lymphatic filaria, Parastrongylus cantonensis, or Trichinella spiralis. The most common nematodes are the following. First is the trichinella. Trichinella spiralis is the most important cause of trichinellosis in humans and is the species that is most adapted to domestic and wild beings. Second is the strongyloides turcoralis. Strongyloides turcoralis or threadworm is the only species of this genus which is naturally pathogenic to humans. Ascaris lombricoides comes in third. The most common intestinal nematode of man is Ascaris lombricoides or the giant roundworm which occurs most frequently in the tropics. Fourth is the Enterobius vermicularis. It is the cause of enterobiasis or oxyuriasis, human pinworm infection, or its local name as piwa, which is characterized by perianal itching or pirutus ani. Fifth is the lymphatic filariasis. It is one of the oldest and most debilitating neglected tropical disease and is caused by microscopic thread-like worms acquired through a mosquito bite. We have other parasitic organisms. Nematomorpha or hairworm and acanthocephala, spiny or thorny headed worms. Hairworms in adults' form are very long, cylindrical, and filamentous with pure white to almost black in color. Probably they do not feed but are able to survive and remain active for days and sometimes weeks in cool water. 
Nematomorphs have a true larval stage that undergoes considerable morphological change or metamorphosis during development, in contrast to the juvenile developmental stages of nematodes. Acanthocephala or spiny or thorny-headed worms are rare, inhabit the intestine of fishes, amphibians, birds, and mammals, and rarely in reptiles. Acanthocephalans are dioecious and usually demonstrate some degree of sexual dimorphism in size, with females being larger. Other parasitic organism in Phylum Arthropoda. Phylum Arthropoda, known as jointed legs. They are bilaterally symmetrical invertebrate animals with segmented bodies, jointed appendages, and hard outer coverings or exoskeletons. Females are generally larger than males. They have complete digestive tract. Mandible is used for chewing or proboscis is used for sucking with the dorsal heart and ventral nervous system. They have open circulatory system. Hemolymph contains hemocyanin, a copper-based oxygen carrying protein. Here we have subphylum crustacea still under the phylum arthropoda. It is found in marine habitats. It has jointed limbs, each often with two branches, termed as biramus. Seven or more pairs of appendages are for feeding, swimming, walking, respiration and reproduction, or clasping, sperm transfer, egg brooding, and carrying young. In the class Arachnida, we have order Scorpionida. Although scorpions rarely sting humans, they are considered dangerous since they produce hemolytic and neurotoxic venom. Next is order Aranida. Most spiders are harmless. Few have chelicerae that are strong enough to penetrate human skin. Among the dangerous Species are Latrodectus or Black Widow Spider or Katipo, and Loxosceles or Brown Widow Recluse Spider. The females of both spiders destroy or kill the males after mating, thus they are called Widow Spiders. In order Acarina, it is the only group that sucks blood and serves as vectors. Ticks can pass many microorganisms to their offspring resulting in a renewable source of the infectious agent. In the class Insecta, we have order Siphonoptera. Adult fleas are on the average 2 to 6 mm in length and have laterally compressed bodies. The main flea species that attack humans include cat flea or Tenocephalidis felis, dog flea or tenocephalides canis, and lastly human flea pulex irritans. The common cat flea is found on both cats and dogs and is the species usually identified in attacks on humans and usually responsible for flea plagues. Diseases transmitted by fleas, bubonic plague, murine typhus, Tungiensis, and Tularemia. Still under the class Insecta is the order Diptera. The name fly applies to insects that have a pair of wings on their mesothorax and a reduced pair known as haltiers on their metathorax. Diptera stands out as by far the most medically important. Here are the five general types. First is mosquito, horsefly, Housefly, Stablefly, and lastly, Lousefly. Finally, we have the order Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera 
includes 120,000 species, have generally rather large wings covered with tiny scales, and they have a long sectorial proboscis. Few species are ectoparasites of mammals as adults, and a few are protolean parasites of insects. Noctuidae species, or Calyptra eustrigata, has the ability to pierce vertebrate skin and feed on blood. So that's all. Thank you for watching.